So the NDP rejected the first draft of the Liberals' legislation. Did the bill not meet expectations, and why not? Well, I, I put this subject together with the one that we just looked at. Primarily, responsibility for health is with the provinces under the Canada Health Act for decades and decades. We've had a deal, universality, it's going to be free, it's going to be transportable from one province to the other. This is the same sort of idea. This is a way of saving money in that system by coming together and having a universal pharmacare program. There's a debate that takes place as these things roll out. In Quebec, which has one of the largest ones, it's a mixed system between the private sector insurance companies that weren't eliminated and the public system that takes over if you don't have a private insurer. The good news is it works. It provides very low cost, in many cases free, access to prescription medication. What we're seeing now is a butting of heads between the NDP and the Liberals on a question of structure. How do we set this thing up? The trade unions, for example, close allies of the NDP, even in Quebec, are saying, look, we think that this should, this pharmacare system should be 100% single provider, single payer, and public. Now, that's an argument that was made that brought in the current system for Medicare. And there are those who are always going to try to knock our current Medicare system, saying, oh, you see, it's because it's too bureaucratic, it's not flexible enough, it doesn't allow for a mixed system. I don't think we should ever go back on that. We should just better fund and better organize that system. But here it's setting up something that doesn't exist. So should the government put a little bit of water in its wine and say, look, we'd like to get something out there for real to help families and to lower prices, because if you've got mass buying, you could get better deals in, in purchasing medications. The NDP is taking a very traditional approach, some would say dogmatic, and saying, nope, it has to be 100% public. So more government, more civil servants, more public administration. I think that the first part that you and I talked about, you know, what we just saw in that, that clip, shows that that's not always a panacea. So since we are talking about remedies, the question becomes which remedy? For Trudeau, it's crucial, because if he doesn't respect his deal to get legislation before the House by the end of this fall term, then he'll have broken the, the supply and confidence deal with the NDP. Is the NDP looking for a way out of that deal? Would Trudeau actually, some part of him, say, okay, if, if, you know, if I'm bound by this deal now, maybe I might as well break it on a question of principle, and that could become part of their pitch to the electors in, in any forthcoming election. So it's complicated. It's got all the potential to really blow up. I do think that cooler heads will prevail because I don't think that the NDP right now has the money or the, the will to go to an election. But Mr. Singh has to be worried about his constant support for the Liberals wearing his own base down. So he's going to keep an eye on that as well. What does your gut tell you, Tom? What do your political instincts say? Do you think the Liberals are going to be able to come up with something and uphold their end of the deal? It's going to be very difficult, and it mm -hmm. depends on how strident the NDP is in holding to its requirement that it be 100% public. I did sense in some of the reactions from Don Davies, who's the spokesperson for the NDP, I think he was trying to be careful not to, to light a brush fire around this. I think that they're trying to hold to their principles. They'd like to get something better from their point of view than what's on the table now. And I think that Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Holland, his health minister, are going to be doing what they can. But it becomes a big question of political strategy. It's a large question. It's not just this one issue. Okay, when do we walk and away from the deal and, and strike out on our own? That is part of the calculation that is being done right now from people who are inside the NDP. They know, and they've spoken to me about the fact that they know that at some point they have to be willing to break the deal if they're not getting what they want. Would Trudeau ever provoke that? That's another question. Would Trudeau go in whole hog and say, okay, we'll see what happens in the House? The other parties will be ferociously opposed for all sorts of ideological reasons of their own. So we're going to see whether or not Trudeau can square this circle and Mark Holland, who's showing himself to be quite able yeah, as a politician and, and a minister. So we'll see whether they can put something on the table to satisfy Singh and the NDP, or whether indeed Singh and the NDP want to be satisfied, or they're looking for a way out of the deal. Before we go, I want to ask you what you're watching for as the Prime Minister's Thanksgiving deadline approaches for grocery executives to find a way to stabilize food prices. What do you think is going to happen? The opposition is calling on the government to announce what the plan is. Well, that's the essential problem with always kicking a problem a little bit further down the road. You come up with another date for climate change, you come up with another date for cheaper food. And the date he chose 
was Thanksgiving. Well, I don't think that that was very realistic. I, I think that he was helped unintentionally by Pierre Poitier, who somehow decided that a turkey could cost $120. I haven't found any of those $120 turkeys yet. But I do think that the average Canadian knows that we're paying far too much for food, that the major grocery chains have taken advantage of what was real inflation as we came out of the pandemic, and they simply they, they simply started price gouging, and they're not very happy with that. So I do think that they'll be rolling it back, maybe because of government pressure to some extent, but I think mostly, Marcia, because they're, people are looking for a cheaper alternative, and they're starting to find them in the market. So I think that the grocery chains themselves are going to have to smarten up. Tom, thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. All the best to you and yours as well. See you soon.